Hello, it is Friday, August 18th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solved. It's a Friday crossword today, which means no theme, but it should be a bit of a tricky puzzle, maybe with some misdirection and punniness. And uh, I hope it's not too difficult because I do have um, a bit of a, a tight schedule today. I did highlight, I, I drew out the um, comments from yesterday's puzzle, so we'll see if I have time to get to those. I don't yet know. It will depend on the solve goes. In any case, um, today's um, possibly, possibly tricky edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Camtron, Henrik Koskinen, David Innes, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the incredible Horan family. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Self Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They are keeping this channel going and sustaining this series, and for that, I am very appreciative. So thank you to them. Thank you to everybody who's a patron. Thank you if you're one. And if you'd like to become one or consider joining, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field underneath the video. There, of course, you can find the bonus videos available to patrons. And I may or may not be able to get the mini puzzle speed solve posted as quickly as I usually do, but I mean, it will certainly go up um, today. It just might, might be later in the day. And uh, those are all there as well as the Daily Self, let's check the crosses mug for benefactors. Thank you to everybody who is a patron. I do really appreciate it. And thank you to all of the channel subscribers as well. You can subscribe to the channel, of course. That would help me out, and it'll help you out by making these videos uh, conveniently accessible to you on YouTube. And finally, uh, you can consider joining the Daily Self Discord chat server. That's a nice, friendly chat community. There's a link in the description field to that as well. All right, so let's get on to the solve. This is, as I said, a themeless crossword by Cameron Austin Collins, who's constructed around two dozen puzzles for the New York Times, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what he's got in store for us today. Jewel, who played Jewel on Deadwood, I don't know. I mean, I, I remember watching Deadwood, but I don't remember that. Rubberneck, to look at something to gawk, maybe? To Rubberneck is when you... Um, kind of slow down, you're driving and you slow down to sort of look at a, um, I don't know, an accident or some some kind of incident. So let's see if that if that works. It may follow praying. Ah, the word amen at the end of a prayer. Okay, Gok might be correct then. So what name would start with G? Gary, Jerry, a certain royal, an emir maybe, uh, the ruler of an emirate. Home makeover informally, a, re, a redo. Is it as simple as that? Is there another word that would be re something that I'm not thinking of? This looks like Jerry is spelled in this manner. Let's see. Under the most dire circumstances, in the worst case, no, in, under the most dire, it was under the most dire circumstances, it was in, everything I'm thinking of is too long. What about this? The cask of Amontillado, e.g. I mean, literally a wine barrel? That would make this not redo, if so. Home makeover informally, re... Expression of support while keeping one's distance. Um... I don't know. I suppose, though, this could be gop as well as gawk. I'm rethinking all of everything I'm putting in the grid. Well, let's let's try. I, I don't know. I'm going to try wine barrel and just see if that works. Oh, right. Of course. Sorry. I Even though I said this is a themeless puzzle today, I still was thinking about this as being potentially a theme answer. So I was thinking, oh, well, it couldn't be as simple as that. It's got to be something clever. No, this isn't a themed puzzle. This won't be a themed answer. Almost certainly, anyway. So let's just say it is, oh, renew maybe? Is there a kind of jargony con contraction of renewal that's R-E-N-U? Maybe. Expression of support while keeping one's distance. I'm not quite sure. I'm done with this conversation. Bye, you might say. I don't know. Blank time. Bedtime? I'm just trying to think of things that would fit here. Let's see if that helps at all. Under the most dire circumstances, in... Uh, like some accents. Uh, twangy, doesn't fit. High performance sob model. Brain blank. 
brain fog feels like what I'm having now, what would this be? Ones who haven't signed. They're sort of applicants or, or uh, petitioners or something. I don't know. Night school subject, ESL, English as a second language, perhaps. Slip. Brings up. Raises. Rises. Rears. You bring up a child. I kind of like that. Let's try that. Like some accents. I don't know. Sub model. I have no idea if rears is correct. Brain. I don't know. Okay, let's keep looking. Shade of blue, aqua maybe, cyan. El Blanc and Los Tiempos de Cholera, uh, Garcia Marquez title. So that would be um, Love in the Time of Cholera. Uh, is it Amor, A-M-O-R? Shade of blue, that would be aqua. Flowers for mothers. Oh, mums, <laughs> right. Okay, so not... So yeah, the, the question mark there indicates a bit of pun, punnery or wordplay. So mum being a um, largely British uh, word for mother. Okay, outspoken oral, maybe, literally outspoken. Let's see if that helps at all. Holy book, the Quran, that would fit. Savoriness, umami, a savory flavor that food can have. Only character to appear in all of the Narnia Chronicles. Right, okay, well, I didn't know this, but my guess would be it's Aslan, who's the the lion, I'm pretty sure. And little bird's eroticist, Nin, a nice Nin. Um, must be the answer there. So Golden Globe classification. Oh, those are awards for drama, for instance, for, you know, screen, screen drama. Uh, wipe. Uh, hmm, 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 not sure. Fiverr. So in U.S., Slang, this could be an Abe, an Abraham Lincoln, a $5 bill, maybe. A wipe, D. I mean, D sounds good for wipe, but I can't think what the rest of it is. Canoe maker's bark could be birch bark, maybe. Used in making canoes, that sounds that sounds reasonable to me. Symbols thought to have supernatural power. Interesting. Do I think it ends with an S or with an A or something like that? Your worst side, and worst is spelled like... The German word for sausage. So what do I think that means? Your worst side. So does this mean a side dish served with sausages, like sauerkraut or something? Maybe it is. The reason I think that might be it is because that this is also a German word. So it would sort of be appropriate to the clue. Let's let's see if this helps. Luke's trainee in Star Wars. A oh, Ray from the recent Star Wars films. Uh, name on the marquee, question mark. So what is marquee being used to indicate here, capitalized like that? Hmm, not sure. Nora Ephron's ironically titled Wallflower at the blank. I don't know. I wonder if I'll recognize this when I see it. Um, I'm not sure. The, I wish the ironic bit gave me the answer instantly, but it doesn't seem to. A ways. Far? It's a ways away? It's far away? Could be. Done informally. And this looks less less promising. Tel, oh, Tel Aviv, though. Um, I just need a little justification. Give me your... Done informally. Finny. That's a thing people sort of say, I guess, with to have, a, I don't know, maybe it's a bit of a kind of French affectation, but you do hear that used kind of informally, or at least I have done. Uh, miss at a country dance. A gal, perhaps? Gals and guys, that kind of thing. Opposite of playing it safe, living on the edge, I bet. Yes, there we go. That fits. It's always nice getting these long uh, grid spanning uh, answers in there. Home for retired circus workers, maybe animal something, animal, um, what is the word I'm looking for here? Animal shelter, it's on the tip of my tongue and I can't, 
can't get it out. Under the most dire circumstances. Oh, in extremis. Right. So there we go. Literally under kind of, you know, superlatively, in this case, difficult conditions. So in extremis, the most dire. Okay. And here we have blank time. Oh, tea time for golf. Or it could be tea time, T-E-A, or when you have tea. Right. I actually don't know which of those it is. They're both plausible. Expression of support while keeping one's distance. Oh, proxy, maybe? Maybe this is Reno? I don't know. What would that mean? Home makeover. Reno. Re... I, I kind of think that's going to be the answer because keeping, supporting someone at distance could be, you know, some sort of proxy thing. But what does that mean? Re... I don't know. I think this must be the answer. It's ridiculous that I can't think what it would mean, but I don't seem to be able to. Anyway, expression of support while keeping one's distance is proxy aid, maybe? Expression of support. Why is it? Why is there the question mark? What's the pun here? I'm not quite seeing the pun yet. Like some accents. Oh, right. And this will end with an E or an A. E does look a little bit more likely as an ending to this word, I think but I'm still not certain. Sob model, don't know. Brain. Ones who haven't signed. Wipe. It was fine, e.g. Fatuous. Fatuous argument, a kind of spurious, spurious argument or something inane. Symbols thought to have supernatural power. I just, I need a little, I need at least a little justification. Give me any reason. There we go. Yes. I need at least a, that. This is a very precisely written clue to match this very well. Give me any reason. I need at least a little justification. Okay, great. So does that help me over here? Name of the Marquise. Oh, the Marquis de Sade. Right. The kind of famously sadistic and uh, kind of libertine French writer. Uh, Nora Ephron's ironically titled Wallflower at the Orgy. Okay, there we go. That's the that's the irony. If you imagine a wallflower being at an orgy, it sounds, it sounds contradictory. Okay, Bill of Science. Bill Nye, science, sort of television science educator. Animal Sanctuary. There we go. <laughs> that's what I was trying to think of. Finally got there to wipe... You know, data, for instance, would be to delete it. It was fine, e.g. Was something? Uh, I don't know. Not seeing it. Oh, Enigma Variations composer, Elgar. There we go. I don't think I looked. Did I look at that clue earlier? I don't think I did. It may follow praying. Oh, right. That's right. So we had... Yes, this was identically phrased. It may follow praying there, and then it may follow praying here. I'm not sure, though. Looks long and hard. Stairs, I suppose, as simple as that. Oh, mantis, praying mantis. Right, so in this case, amen was sort of a word that followed the act of praying. Here, we have a word that follows literally the word praying, not the act of it. So praying mantis. Steam, If uh, this could be anger or ire. It was fine, e.g. Not sure. Bulky Himalayan. A yak lives in the Himalayas. It is a big bulky animal. View from a high pass. Not sure. New Age musician with a pl platinum album tribute. I mean, I certainly don't know any album names by this musician, but in five letters starting with a Y... Yanni, who I think was a, is was a keyboardist, I think. Um, okay, month with two national holidays. February or January? It's early, early in the year in the U.S. There, there are multiple holidays. I don't remember. It's either two January, February. I'm pretty sure. Or could maybe both. I don't know. Oh no, no. Well, certainly January does because it has New Year's Day and. Martin Luther King Day? Is that in January? And then February has President's Day? And maybe it is just January. I don't know. Full of pizzazz. Jazzy? 
Jazzy is an adjective I always find sort of ridiculous. A month with two natural. Maybe so. Let's let's try that. Let's just see if this works. Um, the January gave me this, and then I kind of used that to justify January, which is a bit circular, but it might work out. If not, I can delete it. It's fine. Yolanda with four Grammys and gospel. Not sure offhand. Pasta that's often yes, this is going to be correct. Uh, pasta that's often baked ziti, baked ziti. It's sort of like lasagna, but with uh, ziti tubular pasta rather than lasagna flat sheets. Uh, fire is zeal. You can have a fire, you know, for for some area of interest. Maybe a zeal for it. Log time would be Yule, so the Christmas season, Yule tide, and then parting of the Seine, adieu. So not a parting of the Seine as in the kind of the river parting, but rather um, the, a way to say goodbye in the place where the Seine is, so in, Fr- in France. So in French would be adieu. Like birthdays, uh, natal, so natal referring to birth, an adject- adjectival uh, descriptor there. Yolanda with four Grammys in gospel. Yeah, okay, I'm not still not sure. Word with square or air. Square mile or air mile. Those, those are phrases. So Yolanda Adams. Okay, there we go. Key part. Oh, I'm not sure. Heavy stock. I'm not sure about that either. Kind of uh, several meanings of stock. I'm not sure which to think about. Kind of pie. And Russian region. Ural. Locale for country and folk music, familiarly. Oh, Opry, the gra- grand old Opry is a, is a music venue associated with country and folk music. That looks right to me. Romantic preference, one's type. Bound. Uh, thinking wrapped doesn't fit. Let's see. First name detective fiction. Hmm, not sure. Okay, what now? Old records in brief. LPs, maybe? Vinyl records? Holy person. Oh. Is this not Yanni? Surely it is. Holy person. A Swami, maybe? That seems plausible to me. Let's see. It was fine, e.g. Empire that functioned without money. The Inca Empire? Let's try that. Kind of pie. A pecan pie. There we go. That's a, that's a filling, a pie filling. Old record. So it could be LPs. It could be EPs as well. Um, what about this work crew, a team and key part view from a high pass. Yeah, what, is, what is this? What is a view from a high pass? I really don't know what that's looking for. I keep thinking arc, but I don't understand why that would, ha- why that would be correct. Heavy stock. Oh, some sort of paper, heavy, heavy stock, you know, to, on which to write linen paper. Yes, you can make. High, very high quality paper out of linen. Okay, old records are LPs. Good. It was fine, e.g. A, so, a review, some kind of, oh, so so review. Oh, give me one reason. It's not any reason. I mean, I think either one of those would fit the clue perfectly well, but in this case, it's one reason rather than any. There we go. Okay, good. So it was fine was a so so review. Key part, a vital role in a play maybe, or in just in something that happened in reality. So view from a high pass Alp, right. Okay. So in the Alps, I guess. Uh, and then did that fill anything in that we did not yet know? I don't think anything else. No. Okay. So what is this? Uh, sigils are symbols thought to have supernatural power. There we go. Okay. Sort of mystical symbols. And then once you haven't signed, oh, free agents in a, in a sporting context. Slip and brings up. Oh, yeah, so it, it does look like it's rears, doesn't it? As in a child, like some accents. High performance sob model. I just have no idea here. Brain. 
Boy, this area has been quite elusive, hasn't it? Expression of, expression of support while keeping one's distance is a proxy wave. It doesn't I don't see how that makes any sense. Tea time. Okay. Uh, I guess this could be... Actually, this is probably right. I was thinking this meant accents in terms of how one speaks, but it could be accents like the accents that go over letters, sort of diacritical marks in language. And there's, at least in French, you have the accent aigu and the accent grave, and those refer to the sort of two different ways that the single angled accent can sort of slope. So it could be grave. Do you call it that in English, a grave accent? I actually don't know. It's not really used enough in English for me to ever have learned that. I I just know in French because that's so much more commonly used in French. A grave accent. I mean, it's, not, it's it might be right. Accent grave. Expression of support. It, it allow, the, and the, the other thing is it allows T to be correct. In this case, the, the golf usage. So does that proxy... I just, I cannot think what this is. Slip. Oh, a slip of the tongue, a gaffe. You make a mistake in, in spoken mistake, for instance, or I guess it doesn't need to be spoken. It could be, you could do something wrong. It could be a gaffe. So brain, what is, the, what is the, what going on here? Sob arrow? I don't recognize it, but it, it looks correct to me. Oh, proxy vote. You A proxy vote. Right. Okay. All right. Yes. Someone else kind of votes for something on your behalf. And then brain fart, which is definitely what I've had in this area of the grid. A very appropriate final, final answer. And there we go in, in precisely 20 minutes. All right. Well, there we go. That, that gave me some trouble, didn't it? Uh, so, yeah, a very nice grid, though. Look at this. We have, I only recently learned this is called a triple stack. This is one of those things I've been solving crosswords for so long, but never really, you know, I never looked them up online or sort of learned any of the lingo or anything. So most of most of what I know about crosswords in that regard, even the fact that, that Sunday to, yeah, that Sunday to Thursday are themed, things like that, I only learned through doing this um, series on YouTube. I've mentioned that before, but yeah, triple stack, I don't know if I've used that phrase on, on camera before because I only learned it recently, but this is an example of one. When you have three answers that span the grid, the full grid, and they, um, uh, they're they stacked one upon the other. So you could have a double stack or I guess presumably a quadruple stack or maybe even a quintuple stack. I don't know. I don't remember having ever seen such a thing, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if, if they exist as well. And uh, anyway, Cameron Austin Collins has lined one up here. Give me one reason, animal sanctuary and living on the edge. I mean, it is really impressive to find that kind of thing that will allow all of the crosses to work to work properly. It's, it's, it is, it is a bit of a feat. And, uh, and there we go. And I always find it fun as a solver because it's, it's just nice to get something that spans the entire grid, uh, which I think I did with living on the edge first. And there we have it. This was a crossword that gave me some, <laughs> gave me some trouble up here, especially towards right up until the end, ending very appropriately on what seems to have afflicted me. And, and that was that. Let's see, do I have yeah, I'll take the time to do. Uh, I'll take the time to do the puzzles. Sorry, the clues from yesterday's puzzle. So let's let's do that. Let's discuss those. There, there were actually several, so I did need a fair, uh, just a fair amount of time to do it. I'm loading those up now. So uh, several people mentioned this, so I'm just mentioning Rahul Ricky, who was the first person. But thank you to everybody who pointed this out. Has been pointed out to me before. Hopefully, won't be again. But I wouldn't be surprised. Uh, Isla in Spanish would be pronounced like. Uh, well, the S is pronounced Isla rather than Isla. The S is not alighted. I've made that mistake before. Add this to the list of things that I now kind of psych myself out about every time I encounter it and work myself, sort of reverse psychologize myself back into the wrong pronunciation. It's really ridiculous how that works, but it does seem to be a property of my brain. Anyway, thank you to everybody who corrected me. Long way to Tipperary explains something I didn't already know, fortunately, I guess, uh, which is that car fare is an amount of money to pay for public transportation. 
When I was dating back in the dark ages, my mother would give me car fare in case I needed to take the bus or a taxi home. So there we go. I had not heard that before for whatever reason. I looked it up in Chambers Dictionary and it it listed as being a U.S. specific term, car fare, but, um, which I guess explains why I don't hear it now in the U.K., but to be honest, I don't remember ever hearing that in the U.S. as well. So I wonder if it's a slightly dated term. Uh, in any case, thank you for the explanation. Any profit points out regarding VCRs. I had said, isn't it funny that we call them video cassette recorders, despite the fact that broadly, I mean, at least most of the default use, I suppose, would be for uh, playing rather than recording. But any profit points out when the first VCR came out, there were no pre-recorded tapes to watch. The entire pitch was to shift TV watching. So they were originally pitched as recorders explicitly, which is interesting. I think that probably predated my... Uh, sort of childhood and exposure to VCRs. So thank you for that explanation. Chasmart Designs 4308 explains, new edition, the band, was the forerunner of the boy band in the 1980s, best known for Mr. Telephone Man. They later disbanded when Bobby Brown left to go solo, and the remaining members formed Belle Biv DeVoe, whose major hit was Poison, that girl's poison. Very good, right? So I, I didn't know that, that whole history there. Thank you. And... Brian Parente offers a correction on a correction. Yoshmoyo was incorrect in the statement that you can never have three free throws uh, in basketball. You absolutely can and do get three free throw attempts if you are fouled in the act of shooting a three-point shot and you miss the shot. And then Dave N., who provided the original correction, says, thank you for backing me up on that. Well, thank you all for the correction of the correction. Sorry about that. Sorry to uh, Dave N. I should, I, I now say not having double-checked any of these. <laughs> I, uh, I should check these, I suppose, before reading them. Um, I guess I did check uh, car fare. It's not, well, I didn't check the person. I just looked it up yesterday because I was interested. But anyway, there we go. Hopefully no more errors introduced as a result of those corrections. And thank you to everybody who left them. Thank you to you for watching this video to the end. I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday crossword. Another themeless, um, possibly trickier crossword. We'll have to find out then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. <laughs>